Hey guys, in my last video about 10 gigabit, we looked at the Microtik CRS309. I've been using that switch for the past few months and it's performed flawlessly. In my current setup, it's become the sort of backbone between my Microtik CCR1009 router and two CRS226 switches. Next to the switches, my desktop and three servers are also hooked up to it. Some connections are using 10 gigabit DAC cables and others the Microtech SR Plus J10 10 gigabit copper modules, which have also been working great for me. But how do you know if everything is performing like it should? How do you test this? Well, let's take a closer look at that. So a 10 gigabit infrastructure or backbone is nice, but I want to make sure that I can make full use of it and that there's no bottlenecks I didn't expect. It's always a good idea to test something to make sure it's performing the way it should. That also brings us to the first thing you need to do when testing anything. Figuring out how it should perform. In our case, we're talking about a 10 gigabit network, and after some overhead, you should be able to achieve like nine to nine and a half gigabit. With special tuning and things like jumbo frames, you can optimize performance, but we aren't going to go into that topic today. So let's do some performance tests and let's do what all the popular YouTubers do. Let's uh, copy some files using Windows Explorer and run some speedtest.nets. No, no, why do people do that? Please, please don't do that. You're testing so much more than what the network can handle that way. You want to use as little unrelated resources as possible while doing your tests. That means that if you're testing your network speed, you only want to involve the network components and better yet, only the parts you're trying to test. So not your router or, or an external website or even a hard disk or SSD. You want to know network performance, so use network performance testing tools. Speedtest.net is great, and I use it often, but it is to test your internet speed, not your local network speed. Especially when testing 10 gigabit networking, any of those other resources would quickly become a bottleneck. But even when testing Wi-Fi or gigabit, I would still ask everyone watching this to use proper testing tools for what you are testing. Anyway, with that said, in the case of testing our 10 gigabit network, we're going to use a tool called iPerf. iPerf is a dedicated network testing tool that is available for basically every operating system thinkable. So let's make this a quick little tutorial so you can also test your own network connections to see if everything is working properly. And make sure to, you know, send me some results down in the comments, I'd love to see. First, let's take a quick look at our testing setup. I'm going to be using three of my desktop hardware based servers that are running Proxmox and my Windows 10 PC. In between those machines, I have a complete mix of network cards. My desktop uses a Mellanox ConnectX3 network card that is connected to the CRS309 using a DAC cable. Two of my servers are running Intel X540 T1 network cards and are connected using CAT7 to the CRS309 with an SR Plus J10 SFP Plus module from Mikrotik. And the last server machine has an Aquantia 10 gigabit copper NIC, also connected to the CRS309 using one of those Mikrotik SFP Plus copper modules. So a big diversity of network cards and connections. Well, okay then, iPerf. There are two versions of iPerf that are generally used today, and that is iPerf 2, generally called iPerf, and iPerf 3. For our tests, we're going to be using iPerf 3. The two versions aren't compatible with each other, so keep that in mind. In Linux, such as on our Debian-based Proxmox servers, installing iPerf 3 is easy. We do an apt install iPerf 3 in, in our PuTTY session, and well, that's it, it's installed. For Windows, things are a little bit more complicated. The first result in Google is iperf.fr, and while it's generally okay, they seem to have stopped providing pre-compiled versions for the newest versions of iperf. 
To keep versions matching between operating systems, I'll have a link in the description where you can download the newest version pre-compiled for Windows. I'm unpacking that zip and see temp. Okay, with that, we are ready to do our first tests. So, as I mentioned, I have four machines connected with 10 gigabit using different types of cables and network cards. So let's define some tests. Let's do desktop to server PV OSP, and that server is running the Aquantia 10 gigabit copper NIC. And then let's also do desktop to server PVE Big Boy, which is my 100 terabyte 10 gigabit server, and that one has an Intel X540 T1 copper network card. My desktop is using a Mellanox ConnectX3 with a DAC connection to the CRS309. They're all connected to the CRS309, but still. This should provide a good mix of systems and give us some results. To start, log in to both machines involved in the test. In our case, that's a Windows machine, so I have a command prompt here, and then that's a Debian Linux machine, so I have an SSH PuTTY session here. On those machines, go to the directory if that's needed in that case. In Windows it's needed, in Linux it isn't. In this case, we're going to be using my Windows machine as the client, and we're going to be using the Proxbox machine as the server side. So, we have to start on the server side. So there we just enter iperf 3 minus s and hit enter. This will start iperf 3 in server mode and it starts listing on its default port for a connection. Okay, once that's running, go over to the client machine and over there enter iperf 3 minus c and then the IP of the server side you just started up. After that, iperf 3 will do a quick 10 second test and give you a result on both sides. But that can be a little hard to read, so on Windows let's open Performance Monitor, and on Linux I like to use a tool called DSTAT, and let's run that test again. Okay, that's looking good. Looks like we're achieving about 9.5 gigabit. iperf 3 however only does a test one way. So to verify the other way around works just as well, run the same command, but now add a minus capital R at the end of that command. This will run the test in reverse. In theory, you should again see around 9.5 gigabit. A case where a reverse test could be worse is for instance, if one side has a very low power CPU and it isn't fast enough to generate enough packets to saturate the link. Great, as far as basic iperf 3 testing goes, that's it, you're done. But let's quickly do some more tests to see maybe what kind of problems we could encounter. So let's do a test between my desktop and PVE Big Boy, which is the 100 terabyte 10 gigabit server I built. Hmm. Here we don't seem to be getting the expected performance. But we know my desktop can saturate the link, we just proved that by testing to the other server. Well, for people who've been following my 100 terabyte 10 gigabit server build, this is because of a limit in the PCIe lanes available on PVI, PVE Big Boy. If I have a graphics card in there, since I'm using a desktop motherboard, the PCIe x4 lane downgrades to x1, and with that I can saturate a full 10 gigabit link. 6 gigabit is still 6 times as fast as 1 gigabit, but it depends on your use case what you need. Let's look at another example. As I mentioned in the starting part, I use a Microtech CCR1009 as my main router, and that is also connected to the CRS309 using 10 gigabit. So I use it for all my routing purposes. Let's run a test over multiple VLANs to see what that routing performance is like. 400 Mbit? Wow, that's, that's really low. Well, of course, I know the reason for that. The first is that the CCR1009 isn't running at 1.2 gigahertz, but 600 megahertz to save a bit of power and well, noise. On top of that, I have FastPath disabled. And well, the main reason is that this is a multi-core router and it has nine cores. So let's see what happens if we push nine streams through it instead of one. To do this, we add the minus capital P nine to the iperf command and run it. Ah, those are much better results. So with this test, we've determined the maximum speed of the router with its current configuration. If that's actually a problem or not, again, depends on your situation and the speed you're looking for. Last thing we're going to try is doing an iperf 3 test on my Android phone. 
There are two apps you can download in the Google Play Store. In my case, I've downloaded Magic iPerf. And since it's still iPerf 3, the commands are the same. So let's try it. Okay, those results are in line with what I expected. But let's spice that up a little bit. Let's add a minus capital P4. Since this is a multi-core device, we'll be using four threads to, you know, maybe stress this little phone a little bit harder and then add a minus T60. The minus T60 will make it so that the test runs for 60 seconds instead of 10. This way you could, for instance, walk around with your phone and test actual throughput performance of your Wi-Fi connection in several different spots. And well, that brings us to the end of the video already. iPerf 3 has loads more options, but to do some basic tests in your own network or over Wi-Fi or even uh, servers at your work or over your VPN connection if you have a box on both sides, this should get you started. Let me know down in the comments what performance you are getting. Since iPerf results are all text, you can just copy and paste it. This video also answers the question if the Microtech CRS309 can perform. As I started out with, it has performed flawlessly since it came out of the box, and I can certainly recommend it. If you're looking to pick one up, I'll have a link down in the description. And well, as always, thank you for watching. If you like this kind of video, give this video a like, or a thumbs up, or whatever you want to call it, so I know that, and I might consider making more. And well, I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye bye.